Okay, hello everyone. Um, uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk about 3D image acquisition and processing. And uh, I'm Fuji from uh, Graduate School of Engineering. And <coughs> uh, today's uh, topic is 3D image acquisition and uh, processing and the display. So <coughs> from, end, from end to end, some acquisition to display, <coughs> okay? The, this is the outline of today's talk, but uh, only 30 minutes left, so <laughs> I'm skip <laughs> some slides. Okay, so first, uh, we'd like to consider what is a three-dimensional image? What is 3D display? Uh, this is an overview image of 3D image, um, 3D image societies or something like that. Uh, this is um, many cameras capture um, scene and uh, many big data are transmitted to the broadcast station and the uh, uh, observer can see uh, 3D images. So this is a uh, one example of 3D TV system. And uh, <coughs> in 2010, uh, uh, it was called the first year of 3D TV in Japan. So many company um, started to sell uh, some 3D TV, so-called 3D TV. And uh, 3D TV, many 3D kinds of 3D TV was on the market at that time. So in this talk, um, we'd like to consider what is 3D image in the first place, okay? So this is 2D image. 2D means X and Y. This is X axis and Y axis. So this is 2D image. And for example, if you go to the movie theater and uh, want to watch a 3D cinema, for example, in the case, you are given some, um, this kind of glass. And you wear glasses and then see the 3D image. But please consider, this is not 3D image. Why? Just this is two 2D image. Do you understand? Two to the image, just two, not three-dimensional, okay? But we call this 3D image. So first of all, we have to consider what is three-dimensional? What is three-dimensional image? So in this case, we have to focus on human factor. So this is um, not mathematical, but the human perceive 3D image in the brain, okay? So this is called 3D image. So let's consider a human factor here, okay? So for example, please look at this figure. You can see, uh, you can perceive some 3D impression from this figure, okay? But this Q are uh, listed here, for example, size, small size, large size here, and uh, perspective here, and overlap. Uh, for example, this is not three dimension, but this seems to be uh, 3D. And uh, some shadow, for example, here, and the texture. So from these cues, we can perceive three-dimensional impression. Okay. And the other cues are more important and stronger for human. For example, disparity, uh, this is a technical term, disparity uh, means the difference between left eye image and right eye image. This is called the disparity. And this is convergence uh, in Japanese, fukuso, it's a little bit uh, difficult uh, Chinese character, fukuso. Uh, convergence point, okay? And accommodation, this is the focal length of uh, eye. And uh, motion parallax. So these four factors, are more strong, more important and stronger than the previous ones. And 3D displays, so-called 3D displays, utilize these factors, these four factors. Uh, that means disparity, convergence, accommodation, and motion parallax. And using these factors, 3D di displays are developed. For example, uh, let's look at uh, various types of 3D displays. And uh, this is um, a glass type 3D display. 
And this is uh, just an image of uh, uh, Philips display. Uh, Philips quit to sell th this kind of 3D displays um, several years ago. And this is um, developed by KDDI Labo uh, 3D display. So let's look back to the history. And this is the first, maybe, first in the world uh, 3D display. This is 1838, Wheatstone. A uh, weight stone invented this kind of 3D display. Left eye see left picture, and right eye sees right eye, uh, right picture. And this is the first 3D display. And uh, about 100 years ago, 1903, uh, Ives uh, invented parallax stereogram. Uh, this kind of uh, principle is still used now. Okay, uh, for example. Nintendo 3DS, Parallax Barrier Type 3DS, uh, is uh, based on this kind of principle. Right eye sees only this part, this part, this part, this part. And the left eye sees only this part. Um, that means left eye image and right eye image are separated. Okay? And uh, in other words, right, right image and left image are integrated in this plane. Okay. This is a uh, parallax stereogram. And another principle is integral photography. 1908, uh, Lippmann invented this kind of uh, integral photography. Uh, this is um, still ongoing uh, technology. Uh, for example, I, I will explain later. Uh, uh, NHK laboratory uh, very um, making an effort uh, to develop this kind of uh, integral photography. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, another type is binocular stereo. Uh, this is a very basic uh, anagriff type images, red and, red and blue image. And uh, this is uh, polarized glasses. And you, maybe you wear in the 3D movie theater. And this is lenticular type display, as I explained before, and the parallax barrier. And uh, it can be extended to multi view. And uh, about 15 years ago, uh, Professor Takaki of Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology invented this kind of high density di directional display. And uh, the number of views are very large. Uh, it's surprising. For example, 128, 128 views can be seen at once. This is very uh, impressive display. And another type is holography. Uh, this is figure shows the principle of holography. And uh, holography uses a coherent laser beam. And uh, coherent laser beam uh, generates fringe pattern here, and it is recorded uh, at like a uh, picture, and then in the reconstruction phase, uh, this fringe pattern and can be uh, is illuminated by a reconstruction beam, and the virtual image uh, can be seen from th this side. And this is uh, just a still image, not a moving image. But uh, about 1919, uh, Professor Benton. Uh, he passed away 10 years ago. Um, the, I um, stayed uh, about two months at the MIT level, and uh, um, Professor Benton was my advisor, and he developed uh, moving holography, moving uh, video holography. So he uh, called it the holo video. Uh, this is very uh, impressive one, but uh, um, calculation of hologram pattern uh, it, is, it can be uh, generated from uh, computer pattern, but uh, it takes very long time to generate one hologram pattern. For example, we have some point data, 3D point data, for example, 110 from 100 to 1,000 point data, and uh, we calculate um, a fringe pattern by real time. But it needs very high computation. So uh, MIT developed one building to
to, to calculate hologram pattern. So it was very, uh, interaction, interactive holo video. So if you um, uh, switch something, for example, uh, if you uh, rotate something, uh, image can rotate. It's inter interactive. But calculation is done in the next building. <laughs> it's a very high computation. So very interesting one. And uh, as I said, uh, 1908, uh, <coughs> uh, integral photography was invented. But now, uh, NHK STR, uh, NHK laboratory uh, still uh, doing this kind of research. And uh, this is figure is from <coughs> NHK Giken uh, Kokai, uh, Open Labo, Open Labo leaflet. This so scene is captured using multiple lens array and captured by super high vision camera. This is Japanese super high vision camera. Uh, the resolution is about 8K, 8,000, 8,000 by 4,000. Very high resolution camera. And uh, that kind, of, that signal is transmitted to the receiver and uh, 8K, 8,000 this uh, projector was used. And uh, again, lens array is here and the uh, observer can see three-dimensional integral image. Okay, this is an um, example of uh, image uh, from upper viewpoint, uh, from lower viewpoint, right <coughs> viewpoint, and left viewpoint. As you can see, the resolution is not so high, about uh, 200 by 200, like that. Uh, image is very high resolution, 8K, but uh, using lens array, resolution is reduced. So about 200 by 200. Another type of um, display is called depth fused 3D, uh, DFD. Uh, this is developed by NTT. And uh, now uh, Suyama-san, at that time, uh, moved to Tokushima University. And uh, now he is a professor. And uh, he invented this kind of 3D display. He uses two layers two layers, and in front layer, uh, this kind of image is uh, provided, and uh, in the rear layer, this kind of image is provided. And uh, when observer sees this layers at, at once, so observer can perceive this kind of 3D um, floating balls, for example. So this is very um, impressive display. And uh, they developed a company uh, use uh, called the space illusion, but it failed. <laughs> that, uh, not sure. So I, I hope you can uh, construct very big company <laughs> in the future. <laughs> but this was failed. Uh, but uh, Suyama-san moved to Tokushima University, and, and now he's happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 and uh, this is another type of 3D display. Um, a light uh, point. Uh, can be repro reproduced using plasma. So real 3D point can be drawn in the space. This is uh, developed by uh, advanced industri industrial science and technology. And uh, this is a final example. Um, this is called ray reproducing cylindrical display. Uh, this is developed by uh, Professor Endo Sensei. Uh, he was uh, uh, working with me in Nagoya University, and he moved to Nagaoka Gika Dai now. And uh, this is a very interesting uh, cylindrical display. He called this cylinder, cylinder, not cylinder, but cylinder. Uh, it's very uh, interesting name. And uh, I'll show you the video. So you can see as if a woman is in the cylinder. Okay. This is 3D display. And the 360 degree image is uh, sh uh, displayed in this, on this display. Okay. OK, this, this display is still in our laboratory, but uh, 
uh, it's broken, so <laughs> I, can, I can't show you uh, anymore, but, but uh, this is a video, okay, please, please see this. Okay. And another is 3D display developed by NICT. This is cubic type display, but uh, principal is uh, just the same as uh, integral photography. The F-Vision, uh, Dr. Yoshida developed this kind of F-Vision. This is tabletop 3D display. Uh, just, it's like just table, but some character appears on the uh, disk, this kind of F-Vision. And uh, he first published this paper, but uh, not so many people are interested in this. So he changed the contents. He, uh, instead of using rabbit, he used Hatsune Miku. So everyone got interested in that. <laughs> so the contents is very important, this, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and this is 200-inch 3D display. And uh, it was displayed in Umekita, Osaka Station. Uh, Shin, Shin Osaka Station. But uh, it was closed last uh, November. Uh, 200 inch, very big, very big. And the 200 projectors are behind this screen. So you can see 200 views at once. This is uh, one example of display. Okay, so next. Uh, today's topic is 3D image acquisition and processing. So first, we browsed 3D image. What is 3D image? We, we, first exp uh, we first saw the, this kind of uh, 3D display, that kind of displays, many kinds of displays. So what is 3D image? And what should be the acquisition system? So now we we'll consider about that. So uh, this is the uh, slide from uh, um, my slide in 1992 when I was a doctor course student like you. Okay. And uh, Harashima Sensei, uh, University of Tokyo professor, and uh, he was advisor of me. And uh, we are discussing this kind of uh, integrated 3D visual communication. Okay. So now I explained many kinds of 3D displays. So, what acquisition system should be? Okay. So, at that time, many cameras captures, capture this scene and it is displayed, multiple displays. Computer generated data can be displayed like spatial imaging display. Holographic capturing system corresponds to holography. This is one-to-one -one correspondence. So, but in the future, it should be integrated and we define common data format, okay? The many kinds of 3D displays are converted to one kind of common data. And then at the receiver, it can be expanded to many kinds of 3D displays. So let's consider this kind of uh, three future 3D uh, communication system. Okay, this was the concept at that time. So I wrote PhD thesis, and uh, this is the main concept of the, my um, PhD thesis, 1994. And uh, the next question is what should uh, what this kind of common data format should be? This is the next question. And uh, we discussed uh, about this and uh, uh, reached to some conclusion, real space representation. So this is the um, concept of real space representation. So light source emits light and object reflects the light. And we consider but virtually um, this reference plane here, Z equal to zero. And this light ray goes, uh, come to 
this point and goes through this point and uh, emit it to this direction. OK, so we parameterize this light ray okay, using four parameters. First is intersection of this uh, reference plane and this light ray, x, y. And then this light ray goes to this direction, and we parameterize this direction using two parameters, theta and phi. And uh, if we define intensity of the ray f as a function of these four parameters, we can get this ray space data representation, f, x, y, theta, phi. Okay. This is called ray space. Okay. The ray space is like this kind of um, pattern. OK, this is the main concept. And let's look at the relationship between uh, real space and ray space. This is real space, top view of real space, and y equal cost constant. And uh, as I said, one light ray can be parameterized using this intersection point and this direction. In this top view, this x and this theta determines one ray. So it can be mapped to ray space here x and theta. The theta is converted using tangent. So x u plane, one, just one point. OK, one light ray corresponds to one point in ray space. This is a relationship, OK? So next, we consider bunch of light rays which pass through this one point, p, x, z. OK, so many light rays pass through this point that one light ray corresponds to one point. So if we consider a bunch of light rays which pass through this point P, it forms a line here. This is a very interesting uh, relationship between real space and ray space. So what does this mean? We capture 3D scene by using many cameras, for example. So one camera captures light rays which pass through this aperture of this camera. Okay, So based on this relationship, uh, this light ray forms a line here. And if we pile up in the y-axis, so we can get this kind of box. Okay, uh, We call it yokan in Japanese, and wiro uh, in Nagoya. Uh, okay. <laughs> so we call it, this is wiro model in Japanese. So the important point is point, uh, one view image corresponds to the section image of this wheelow. Okay. So once we get the wheelow, we can cut wheelow. And then the uh, section image corresponds to free viewpoint image. So this is the main concept of free viewpoint image. So uh, once we got this box, we can get free viewpoint image. Okay, so this is the main idea of light uh, ray space or light view. Okay, we skip this, and uh, this is a concept of uh, ray space. This is a kind of wheel, uh, and we cut here. We can get this kind of free viewpoint image. And uh, this is a spherical coordinate uh, version. In this case, a uh, cut is not uh, along line, but along sinusoidal curve, sine curve. Yeah. And this concept is, um, as you may know, um, corresponds to uh, light field rendering. Light field rendering is um, uh, proposed by uh, Stanford University group. Um, Mark Reboy is a very famous professor. And they uh, presented light field rendering in C-graph 96. Okay. The concept and ray space and light field is mathematically that coincides. Uh, two, two concepts are completely the same in, in mathematical. Yeah. And this is based on a polymonoptic function. This is um, first proposed in 1991. And uh, 
But this paper does not mention about this plenoptic function. And uh, my doctor thesis also did not mention about this plenoptic. Both didn't know this concept. But uh, this is uh, xy lambda, the wavelength time, the viewpoint vx, v1, vz. Um, this is um, nandemoari <laughs> in Japanese. <laughs> so, so it's me. OK. So it is uh, reduced to four dimensional function. This is a very innovative point. Okay. So light field and ray space is four dimensional data. And this is very important. But uh, this is one subset of plenoptic function. It can be said that. Okay. Okay, this is a ray space um, concept. Okay, so the concept is here. 3D image acquisition and ray space representation, storing and transmission, and then cut the yokan and the wiro, we can get free viewpoint image. This is a concept of free viewpoint TV system. So let's look at the acquisition system then here. Okay. So one example is multi-view camera system. Uh, about uh, 2000, uh, we developed, our laboratory did develop this kind of uh, multi-camera system. Uh, eight camera system, four by four camera system. And after that, uh, we developed a 16 camera system. This small black, uh, this, this size, uh, black thing is uh, camera, NTSC camera. Then we set 16 cameras here, and uh, each camera signal, NTSC signal at that time, is transmitted to PC, and this is PC cluster. And this is uh, mm, aquarium, <laughs> one thing. And uh, I, I bought this aquarium at the uh, um, home center. It was somehow very, very expensive. <laughs> okay. And uh, at that time, Marriage camera system was a buzzword. For example, Stanford University developed 128 camera system. Carnegie Mellon University uh, developed this kind of camera system. So our Nagoya University developed 100 camera system. Okay. Okay. This is 100 camera system. It, it was a placed uh, IB Nishito. I've been to Rokkai, and now uh, you you are uh, leading studio uh, there. Uh, at that time, this system was there, 100 camera system, and uh, specification was very. Uh, I'm proud of this kind of specification. Synchronization is less than one microsecond. The resolution is about uh, one million pixel and raw data, and. Uh, camera is like this, and 100 camera in 1D line, and 1D arc, and 2D array. <laughs> okay. So we developed this kind of this. And we captured many kinds of scenes. Uh, for example, Fu <coughs> Sentaro. This is a bit of a strange one. Uh, <laughs> you, you can notice that. And Kendo, uh, other scenes. And I'll show you one example. This is uh, cello, captured by 100 camera. And Takeda Sensei also set 100, 100 microphone. Yeah, so and, uh, we, we <laughs> capture 100 <laughs> camera, and he <laughs> set 100 microphone. Okay. And the next is called the Champagne Tower. And we provided this sequence. Uh, uh, we provided MPEG. MPEG is a standardization organization and with this uh, sequence. And uh, they used this sequence as an um, image encoding experiment. Okay. So this kind of specular reflection is very important, <coughs> that kind of use. Okay. So we used. Uh, we consider what kind of specular reflection is appropriate for that sequence. So 
we adopt this kind of um, champagne tower. But champagne is very expensive. So we used green tea <laughs> in this case. Oi <laughs> ocha in Japanese. Okay. And <laughs> this is a um, collision simulation system. Uh, this is a uh, simulation to check synchronization between image and sound. Okay. And this, is, this graph shows us very accurate synchronization. OK, so very smart 100 camera system, but in the back it was a mess. Okay. So if one cable is dropped, oh, what happened? So which is appropriate connector? So <laughs> we got lost. Okay. So um, we call spaghetti haisen in Japanese. So it was very mess. And another is post-it camera calibration. This is very um, important calibration. So we insert paper in between and then adjust the camera position. OK. OK, so let's move on the next topic. Oh, OK, you sure. So the next principle is um, time division multiplexing. Uh, here, time division multiplexing. So we developed 100 camera system. But it was a very large system and very expensive and uh, mm, very costly. So instead of using 100 camera, we used just one camera. But this is moving, OK? Moving from this point uh, to this point, And we capture 100 images between this path. We can get 100 images, OK? But we need movie. So this camera should be oscillate 30 hertz, for example. So if we can move camera 30 hertz like this, we can get 30 hertz, 100 image. OK, this is a concept. But <laughs> how to realize this? So we used to os we developed some optical system, this kind of system. For example, we used a parabolic mirror, two parabolic mirrors. Object is here, OK? The light ray emitted from here, and then upper side parabolic mirror reflects these light rays and forms a parallel beam and then converges to one point. Okay? And we can get real image. So if we put peak here, and this is parabolic mirror, and we put parabolic mirror again, and peak flows here, okay. like this. And we put galvanometer mirror here. A galvanometer mirror oscillates, and uh, it changes the uh, angle. Okay. So I show you the video. For example, here. Okay. For simulation, uh, this oscillation um, frequency is very low here, but uh, in real use, uh, it oscillates 30 hertz. OK, so this captures the light ray, ray space, um, for, for example, here. So this captures Uiro by scanning, OK? And then cut, we can get free viewpoint image, like this. So this is kind of a Yoshio, kore wa Yoshito. OK, so we use this kind of capturing system, light ray capturing system, 360 degree. And this camera, new type of camera, is connected to C Linda, as I described before, 360 degree display. So this is a demo video. OK, a peak is here, <laughs> floating peak here. Okay. And this is captured and then 
real time display three on 360 degree display. Okay, so we use the very high speed camera at 2000 frames per second. So high speed camera is very dark, so we need very strong light. But light is very hot, and we used parabolic mirror. What happens? Peak burns. We get yakibuta. Okay. So <laughs> okay. okay. So it's I wrap up this. Lastly, I show you some video. Uh, this is um, the free viewpoint image. As I said, uh, I uh, introduced the 16 camera system aquarium, and this is a. Uh, captured image, 16 image. And some processing is done on this data. We can get free viewpoint image like this, okay, as if camera is moving. So we use the 16 fixed camera. And some processing is done. And then we can generate this free viewpoint image. So we can go into the aqua aquarium. and move to left. OK, so today's topic uh, starts from this 3D capture, communication, and 3D display. But we introduced ray space concept. So 3D image acquisition is how to capture ray space, okay? how to transmit, how to st store ray space, and then how to display 3D display. Okay, this ray space centered 3D communication is proposed in this talk. And this is a uh, figure from IEEE signal processing magazine, top level magazine. And uh, what this man is seeing is ray space, Yokan here. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so, any questions? Maybe you are hungry, so <laughs> let's let's wrap up. Uh, yes, please. Thank you for your nice uh, lecture. Uh, I'm, I'm not so clear about what is this different from nowadays. Which, what uh, what we view, uh, what we can see in the uh, in the movie. We, nowadays we can already see some three D movie, right? So what is the difference between? Mm, 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 mm. Um, as I said, three uh, D movie is composed of just two right and left 2D image, 2D video. But uh, this concept is, mm, so to say, uh, infinite number of uh, viewpoints. OK. So you have two eyes. So if, if the display provides two image to left and right eye, you can perceive 3D image. But it is not real 3D, just a 2 2D video. But uh, my concept, or ray space or light field concept, is real 3D, x, y, plus viewpoint axis, not just two point, but continuous uh, one axis. So this means 3D image. OK, that is the difference. Uh, so mm. it's a high quality 3D image, or just we don't need that kind of blood, it's just mm. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So we do not need blood, just mm. uh, As a data, as a data, uh, we provide infinite number of viewpoints. This is w from display side. And uh, for viewer side, just two image are enough to perceive 3D impression, but not real 3D. So if you move, for example, head, your head. So image is fixed in the cinema case. But this, if you have real 3D, if you move your head, you can see another side of the scene. So that is the difference. Okay. Okay. Any other questions?
Okay, if you have some questions, uh, please contact me after this, or you can come to our laboratory, uh, IB Kita Hachikai. Okay? So thank you very much. <laughs>